What's up, everybody? It is Eric, and this is Biz Talk, and I am here with Sage. I'm going to butcher your last name, Sage. Delval. Delval. Delval or Delval? Delval. Delval. Sage Delval. Yeah. And Sage is a, um, I don't know, even want to say up and coming, like you've already Ooh. up, came, went and came back, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess you could say that, I guess, right? yeah. So do you want to tell us how old you are? Yeah, uh, 25, unfortunately. Getting up there. Unfortunately. Dude, up wait there. a minute. Unfortunately. <laughs> getting up there, man. All right, interview's over. Right. <laughs> oh, gosh, unfortunately. <laughs> Bullshit. Haven't made my first billion yet, so I feel like that's... that's 25. Isn't that the new TikTok goal? Is to hit like a billion dollars before you're 25? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of... a lot. You've heard of, ever heard of prop money? Yeah. There's a big. lot of that floating around in that TikTok videos. <laughs> Maybe I should get some of that then. <laughs> That'll help the ego a bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, um, Sage is uh, a in the tech industry, yes. right? And um, twenty five years old, you I would qualify you as you know top twenty five under twenty five at least in New Jersey at this point. I mean, I don't make these ratings, <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty big bar. Right? I appreciate it. From from what I've uh, understood about your um, your vision, your drive, um, and the direction you're going in. Off camera, we were just talking about you getting your first GSA schedule yeah. contract. I'm, Mark and I have been doing government contracting for over 10 years now, and I don't think I've met anybody 25 years old getting their first GSA contract. It's a big lift. Well, you know, awesome team, great people, awesome right. opportunities. So tell us a little bit about um, you, your company, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the obstacles you faced and how you overcame them. Yeah. So my life pretty much started in tech. I grew up in Willingboro, New Jersey, um, and my aunt was an uh, early computer teacher in New York, in the Bronx. So she always had access to these computers, and I would always go to the Bronx and, and play with whatever materials and stuff she would have. From there, uh, it was just this huge thing of like, I love this. I love the technology side. From there, I got to meet some incredible people just as my life interacted. And there was one in particular individual, his name was Tom Spadaro, and he actually holds um, one of the patents for three-way uh, communication. Talk. Okay. So he's one of the patent holders for that. So learning about that, and he made prison software, the communication software for prisons. And I was like, I, was, I remember I'm super young. I go up to him. I'm like, teach me everything you know. And he looks at me and he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, when you get older, come, if you remember, come back to me and I'll teach you. Okay. And I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I went right back to him as soon as I turned like 12. And I was like, teach me everything you know. And he's like, I faintly remember you. Yeah. Sure. So he, he took me under his wing and he started showing me everything from computer programming, which at the time was, it wasn't as popular. It was still books. He was like, if it was, he wanted to learn like CUDA or something, like how to use CUDA cores, he was using like a book or something. So he would be prescribing me these books to read. He would be showing me physically hands-on. It was lots of late nights. I was his basically assistant for anything he needed. If he needed a cable, if he needed me to research something, I was that kid and it inspired something in me that said, I love this. I think this is so much fun. And it led on to amazing opportunities. From there, I got introduced to people over at Microsoft. Um, so I started my journey over at Microsoft. I was working on the Bing product team for a little. Um, there was a campaign a few, few years many years ago, which was like a Bing versus Google. I'm not sure if you remember that. It was like they would take people you from remember outside. That? Yeah, and they would be like, okay, we're gonna do two search results. And you would hit the enter key and they would like look at the speed and the accuracy of the results and like, which one would you want? And you would say, oh my gosh, this this one is so much better. And they're like, that's actually Bing. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, like the, it was like the Pepsi challenge <laughs> yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. So. I was part of that team that once that campaign launched, we were to then take that data and distill it as more users were using it and pretty much look at what Google was doing and say like, how can we improve upon it? It was an awesome team. I won't call it successful. <laughs> um, I feel like what we were trying to accomplish back then is finally starting to happen now with their open AI um, partnership and investment. I feel like that's what they always needed and wanted. But at least I had the awesome experience sitting in like some of the greatest focus groups, some of the greatest teams. Uh, they're taking my, you know, 
young feedback as as word and you know yeah, it right? means something and they kept me for a little while so after that the contract was up the team was dissolved and i was like i love this like i have to find another gig i was by stupid luck someone that i knew that was part of that had decided to move over to electronic arts and i was like i know nothing about video games i'm nerdy i'm geeky but i'm not a, like a video gamer so i was like okay i know nothing about video games but i had an ipod touch and at the time, EA was just starting to get into iPod touch games, like this touch screen, we're moving away from consoles, App Store is very new and young. And I was like, okay, um, let's, let's move over to this. So I served on their product quality team. So essentially they would give us the design documents that they would say like, hey, here's what we're trying to accomplish. Here's like what the development team is trying to do. And here's the end result. Like how well did we align on and we would be that final quality test. And I got to work on some awesome video games like Need for Speed, Bejeweled. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a really fun time in iPhone. And like, you know, iPod Touch World where you're like, wow, like I'm touching this and moving the iPhone side to side. The car is driving. So from there, um, I just kept on going startup to startup to startup. I was, I was obsessed with it. Um, and then I went to college. My parents, um, I'm Puerto Rican, and uh, my parents are kind of like old, yeah, kind of old school <laughs> though. They're like, this tech thing that you're doing is really cool, love it, but like, it's time for college. And I'm like, no, no, not at all. Like I'm all, you know, I, I think I'm a big shot because I made X amount of money. I'm like, look at me, I'm a, uh, you can't tell me how to spend my money. <laughs> and my mom looks at me and she's like, okay, your graduation is, I think it was like June 3rd. And she's like, June 6th, I need a decision whether you're moving out or you're going to college. Point blank. Nice, mom. Nice. I was like, are you, are you serious? And she's like, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. That, that, that's the choices here. Uh, so I was like, well, kind of blew all the money I made on girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> you know? Uh, Did you your father? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So dad. <laughs> so dad, yeah. That need a little loan. Um, so I, I was like college. So where'd you end up going to college? So I ended up at Stockton. Okay. Which is how I ended up in this area. Okay. So I was like the first week in Stockton does this like one week trial type of thing where yeah. if you in the one week, if you don't like it, they'll give you your money. You don't pay for the semester. I was like, cool. So I made a deal with my parents. I'm like, if I make back all the money in that one week, do I have to? And my mom was like, I will break that contract. And I was like, I, this is before I knew it was a one week free trial. So I thought like, wow, like she's really investing not that it was free, but um, well, whatever. I took it. I was like, I'm going to make money. Started a little, that was when drop shipping was really big. Oh my God. I remember yeah, that. I was like, I'm going to drop ship a ton of stuff. Uh, was doing super well. It's like, okay. I'm showing my mom all this stuff. I'm like, look, mom, I'm doing it. My mom's like, okay. So are we taking the one week? And I was like, well, I'm kind of having fun at college, too. And she's like, so what do you want to do? I was like, maybe I'll do both. And then that way I have something to fall back on, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I fell in love with education. I fell in love with it. Um, I fell in love with the university. I fell in love with the, my fellow peers. And I decided to stay. And then I decided to extend it and get my master's there as well. So um, it was time for me to graduate. COVID had hit. Every, all opportunities have kind of, they're a little rocky. I had amazing job offers on the table to, to go with XYZ company, to start divisions, to do this and that with incredible salaries. And the thing was, I had to leave, I had to move. And stupidly, I said, you know, I see the potential in where I am. I think I can find and build something right here in New Jersey. <laughs> and Not that stupid, but I, you know it was it's, it's ambitious. What was the change? It's ambitious. It's ambitious. Um, so I was like, yeah, I just need to find the right person. It's like I need to find the right direction. So luckily, I stopped into liberal arts college. So you have to take a lot of classes that don't necessarily relate to anything you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you're paying for stuff and you're like I really don't know why I'm paying for this thanks uh, this is great why do I have to take watercolor yeah. I'm going into computer science <laughs> <laughs> essentially that you're like alright like face painting 101 so I'm in one of those classes sorry Stockton 
<laughs> Much love. Uh, heavily involved now, so, you know, this is probably going to come back to bite me. But Yeah, unedited, <laughs> raw, unfiltered. Probably going to come back to bite me. But there was a silver lining. I met someone I would have never met, which was now my co-founder, co-owner of the business, Francisco. When I saw him working, I would come in late because it was a class I didn't care about. Um, it was a class that I genuinely could care less about the topic. But I always saw him working. Every single time I came in, he was working on something. And I, I finally looked over at him and was like, what are you working on? Like, what is this? I see lots of code. I see like, what, what are, who are you? What are you? And we built that relationship over the classes. And I finally convinced him. I was like, you're, you're incredibly smart. And I have a product background. Like, I, you know, I'm a business major, I have a product background. I think we can do something together. And convinced him to sign paperwork with me over a Stromboli to start a business. <laughs> so, I mean. Uh, well, I didn't give Mark even a Stromboli. I just told him, quit what you're doing. You're going to be my damn partner. <laughs> no, no, it's not enough. I, well, Mark, I, I buy food, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you ain't poaching. We talked about that. Fuck you. <laughs> the next, that's the next phase is to poach. Gastrombolis and drinks. That's, uh, we'll talk Mark, after. I know where you live. <laughs> we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk after. <laughs> so, you know, was able to convince him. We decided, you know, we're going to start this. And the focus was small business small business. We're going to build big technology for small business. And quickly we learned small business, they don't have the money. No, they don't usually. They typically they don't. It's don't tough. They don't care a lot of the times. They're like, especially over by the shore. They're like, look around. My restaurant's packed. My hotel's packed. Yeah, it makes sense. I really don't need you, kid. <laughs> and you get it because you're a small business too and it's you yeah. need to make money to grow your small business it's just you have a different sort of way of looking at it so but you can understand where they're coming from oh absolutely no like it, it you know it hurt in the moment you're like oh no this is the best thing we would have increased blah 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 but we didn't really know you yeah. know it was one of those things where we suspect you know, we had all so you literally things. had to you literally had an idea and you had to like pivot instantly oh yeah and then when after, so we're like, okay, small business. We finally get a few small businesses to agree to us. Cool. Oh. And we were like, oh, okay. Now, at the time, it wasn't much expense, right? Like, yeah. We, we always, the running joke is it was two kids and a laptop we purchased. We, you know, we raised enough capital from, from clients to get a really nice MacBook. And that's, <laughs> that's what we were using. We felt so proud of ourselves when we were at Best Buy. Like, yeah, the, the TD business, you know, card put it on here it felt real at that time sure um but that was it that's all we had to our name is two kids and this one match so so <laughs> so you 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 basically you literally bootstrapped yeah classic story bootstrapped with no almost no necessarily you had your college education right so that's what you're coming out with yeah you bootstrapped in and then now to, where's that pivot point for you from um, wow, small businesses really don't want us to, I'm going to get a GSA contract next week. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say COVID. Yeah. COVID was probably our biggest pivot moment because it taught us we don't have to be a one trick pony. It, and it forced a lot of businesses to kind of think outside of what we can do. Yeah. Didn't we hear that again today? Some, somebody said that too. Oh, it was the, the guys that own the restaurant here. COVID, there was that big pivot yeah. for them too. They had to just make a shift. Like you, you have no, it, it was nothing else. And at the time, it was all job offers had, had dried up. Dried so up. it wasn't even like, okay, let's close the business. Let's pivot and do something personally separately. It was, hey, we got nothing to do. We're sitting at home. Why not figure this out? Tech is the perfect time to do this. We're remote. We, we understand how to do this. So we were given some awesome opportunities. Um, Netflix was one that really gave us a, like a small opportunity to help them with, with the strategic problem that they were facing. And we were like, okay, great. And that really showed us, okay, maybe we can make more complex software. Maybe we can figure out how to solve things that go beyond like a small business. Um, and from there, we just kept on every year saying, okay, we've hit X. How do we hit Y? Right. How do we keep on building upon that? And this was the first year. We're, we're making five years next year. Congrats. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And we, we've really said this year, what are we? 
who are you? And we brought on consultants and we brought on people that had the experience because we, we were eventually like, we bootstrapped it this far. Let's actually understand and sit down with people who've done this for, for decades. Right, right. Um, that really gave us a clarity and it showed that we did a, a lot of good, right? But then a lot, a lot, a lot wrong that we could have definitely did. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's what you need to do. I think that's your journey yeah. as a small business is looking back at the things you did wrong yeah. and um, not letting them drag you down, but allow you to analyze them go back and look at them and say, here's what we do right. And bringing in people who are smarter than you. I have a set, I've, I've heard this saying, I've adopted it. The smartest person in the room is the person who knows they're not the smartest person in the room. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I want to be the dumbest. Yeah. <laughs> I want right. to be the dumbest. So I think that, um, you realize that. So who are some of your, so, so before we jump into, you know, yeah. like, Hey, this is where I dropped the ball and I fell down this flight oh, of gosh. stairs. Before we jump into that, who are some of your clients today? right now that that let's say somebody who would be watching this video would say oh i know that name so we have some awesome clients so netflix is still an active person that we work along stub hub um we do work for if you're from atlantic city ocean casino they were the first ones that really gave us our big break okay so thank you so much ocean um they really believed in us even when everyone else told us like you guys are young they give us our uh, first big shot that's nice so that's awesome. for a casino of their size and of their staff it was it was incredible and we have a great working relationship now um hard rock has also been a great one for us hard rock's been been great um live nation has been phenomenal with us okay so let, let me reel this back a little bit here so <laughs> wait a minute you bootstrapped this shit all the way to now figured it out did a bunch of pivoting um and you know you're just you are just two guys, local Jersey guys, out of Stockton, under 30, and you are working with these major brands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think I know the answer to this, but oh, um, how do you end up being basically in the eyes of the, you know, because that's the syndrome. That's the syndrome of every small business. Oh, I'm a nobody. Yeah. I'm small. I'm a nobody. So how do you go from being a nobody and with all due respect is the mind frame um, to working with a somebody like what did you do who I think it's just always continuing to say I'm a nobody I, I it hasn't hit me yet we work with these companies we work with these organizations well being humble is one thing it doesn't but... it doesn't hit me it is just let's let's deliver because I know at any point if we drop the ball on any of these it's over the dream is shattered but how'd you get in the door the, the doors honestly have just been ew draw luck of the draw like luck plays an immense part of this organization and i always say this last year we were going to close our doors okay. this is something that some of our partners and no one really knows we were going to close our doors the account was running dry we had staff to pay for we were looking at vc we we're looking at merging we we're looking at selling and a check slides under the door and we open it and we're like oh great <laughs> roll back all the tears <laughs> we're back in business <laughs> you know it, it, it's one of those th yeah it's one of those things you're like okay thank god oh, I, I, I get that up. but not everybody has luck like no. oh, and, and let's be real here yes there's a certain degree of t right time right place yes but you at some point had to walk out the door and knock on somebody's door shake somebody's hands to get that contract with ocean yeah so you did something there you didn't just happily walk down the street, jump into Burger King, and dude was like, I'm going to hire you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it all came down to just networking. Purely being in Ocean came down to me being at an event that someone at Ocean was at. So networking. It was, and this wasn't a very formal event. This was um, the opening event of NOLA's. When NOLA's was first opening, I happened to get an invite by a friend okay. who was just hey, they're, they're doing like photo ops, they're doing this and that, can you dress up nice and just show up? They, they need to fill the room. And from there, it was just a random conversation that led to something. And now I, take, I don't take conversations for granted. No, okay. I, I, and I also don't go in with intention. And I think that's one of the key things is I meet with everyone. Regardless of if they have that million dollar bank account or if they're just an up and coming person with a dream or vision, if they want to meet, I'm more than happy because I, I've seen 
the most meaningful things come out of the oddest situations where it's just like conversations like this. We're just talking one day. I pop in your head. Hey, you know what? This may be a person that's aged to me or something along those lines. And that has just continued to snowball. Right. Um, you know, it's not always the quickest for sure. No. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of times, a lot of tough conversations, but it's also understanding your, that you are not the best. There are other bidders. There are other people. And to go in with that humility and say, look, I'm not, I may not make much on this. How much time? Yeah. Okay. Great. So let me show you his time. Yeah, no. You have I'm no talking. idea how much time. You weren't watching the clock. <laughs> are you sh <laughs> That means I'm engaging, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or he's zoned out, one of the two. <laughs> he's so engaging. He's engaging. He's got us all mesmerized. I was told yesterday I talked too much and everyone's No, no, no. You're like, good. You're good. Like, That's you're terrible. good. You're good. No, you're good. I mean, you know, I think the benefit is, is like, some of the problems that, and, and I go back to what I faced, like my first gig, really self-employed gig, I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. I got hired to do a sign, paint okay. a sign, make a sign from scratch. And um, I was so happy. Yeah. And, you know, I had art skills, I had design skills, but this was my first, I mean, I had done other things in my youth, like I was a DJ and I was, oh, you know, nice. I was like all kinds of like goofy shit that teenagers okay. are, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But this is my first legit thing. Like this, this carpet company wanted me to make their for sale, their sale signs, and I'm like gung ho. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. one letter was crooked, and the guy's like, "I'm not paying." You. <laughs> That's a humbling right there. Yeah, well, it's humbling. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, I think you know there was like a lot of. Um, at that point, I didn't have, well, I didn't have, you know, there was no internet really. Like we didn't have the internet until like I don't think I think my first internet in the house was in the '90s. Um, I think I had a beeper. Like that was a big f form of communication. Nice. Um, I missed that era. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what side of that era you were on. Um, but I don't think we had mentors. Like back then, mm. the mentors we had had to be introduced from dads or moms or friends of the families. There was not a big, there was not access to mentors. And I think, you know, like, you being the age you are, telling the story you are, I think that's really, really important because the truth of the matter is, is that along the ways you you have failed oh, and along the way you will fail again. Yeah. Um, but you keep going. And I think we have a lot of young people now because we have seen a rise um, in the number of LLCs formed over the last couple of years since the pandemic mm. that um, tell us that more people are starting their own businesses. More people are, you know, turning their side hustles into a full business. Yeah. There's a, a greater number of young people, younger people doing it, probably more now becoming a legitimate business, like a legitimate business than when I was a kid, right? Yeah. When I was young. Eliminate so, stand. <laughs> yeah, a lemonade stand, right? That, that some the other neighborhood bullies shook down for a quarter of the... <laughs> So I think you're, I think you talking is really important for somebody watching this that's 20 years old, 19 years old, even like 50 years old, to be honest with you, because that gives, there's a renewed energy in that, right? Yes, for yeah. even older people who are actively there and they're not maybe sure, is this the end of the road for me? Because my business is hurting a little bit. Yeah. Um, and to see that there's people out there that even younger than them that are still fighting that drive, I think that's uplifting, inspiring too. So no, you don't talk too much. We just <laughs> have a time limit. Yeah. yeah. Right? Maybe. <laughs> so based on that time limit, I, I need you to give um, the name of your company. Yes. So, so give us the name of the currently company. Currently we're FNS Digital, but we are rebranding. That rebrand launches in January. Fantastic. And you will keep me posted on that. Absolutely. Because we love branding. Um, and then give the people one piece of advice it doesn't matter what it is a piece of advice that you feel is necessary for a small business owner just hold on keep on holding on and keep on believing in what you're doing but don't become too stubborn where you won't take advice and you won't you refuse to pivot um that's going to be key to staying open yeah yeah 
So that's awesome. And then, of course, like you said, not taking any conversations for granted, we are about to introduce you to Kanani, our Kanani. She's mine, though, by oh, the way. Wow. Like, you can't poach her that hard. I will hunt you down. I feel like you're just putting the walls up, man. No, no, no. You can borrow them. You can borrow. <laughs> so I will introduce you to Kanani and her team at uh, Alchem Engine so that you could see if there's a, a, a some synergy. I hate that word, but synergy. Yeah, corporate talk. Corporate talk. <laughs> Let's get some synergy. Um, and that's just from a conversation right before you're about to come into an interview. So I'm excited. Awesome. Sounds great to me. So hopefully by the time this air, you guys will be making some moves. Yeah. New name, new opportunities. Thank you so thank much. You so much. I appreciate really you appreciate coming. It. And uh, we'll see you at the round table. Sounds good. And we're out. All right. Dirk. Good, good job. Cool. Good job. Dirk, we're going to pause, let this uh, process, and then we'll get the next... Uh,